Okay, so now let's do a quick calculation based question covering the Goodman criteria for fatigue failure. And specifically, this is under the new FE handbook under the variable loading failure theories. So here we have a quick calculation based question, but before that we know this question will depend on the understanding of what we mean by the endurance limit. So we know here we're looking essentially at cyclic loading. So we're essentially, you can think of a spring, you're applying compression, tension, compression, tension, compression, tension, and you're doing this over a period of time. Now picture maybe a car axle, it will experience these compressive and tension forces over time for a certain number of cycles. So we know that under the application of a cyclic repetitive load, if a material shows no evidence of fracture, no, no evidence of fracture, then the property, this property, when we have no evidence of fracture as we have cyclic load, is called the fatigue limit, or in other words, the endurance limit. So the endurance limit is denoted by the variable in the handbook we will use SE. So this is the endurance limit. So that's the definition. Again, no sign of fracture. And then at this endurance limit, we can essentially just keep loading the specimen. That will be the endurance limit when we have no fracture under a repetitive, rep repetitive cyclic load. So then we know usually the materials are going to be steel and certain other steels. These have endurance limits. And since the tested steel specimen can sustain an unlimited number of cycles without failing. So they have endurance limits, right? But we know sometimes the endurance limit is not observed for many other materials, such as aluminum and other type of materials. So I think it will be um, aluminum non-ferrous alloys. So if they ask you a conceptual question, non-ferrous alloys experience no endurance limit. An example is aluminum, copper, and magnesium. So we have no endurance limit for these because under the cyclic loading, the aluminum shows evidence of cracking and fracture, right? This property we call the fatigue strength. So when, when we test these using the specific test, it's called a rotating bending test. We experience some fatigue strength for aluminum and other non-ferrous metals. So you might have seen this before in your material science class. We have the S versus N curve, and this is specifically drawn for steel. So this is for steel here. So let me denote this line as for steel. And we know that this range is going to be the finite life, and this is the ultimate strength. So the ultimate strength we get from the stress strain diagram, right? From that test, the tension test, just the normal tension test. We have the ultimate. And we know as we increase the number of cycles using this rotating bending test, we increase the number of cycles, we will hit a specific point at a specific number of cycles here. At this point for number of cycles, we will hit a point where the line begins to go flat. And right at this point, we have a certain number of cycles. So let's say, let's just give a random number. Let's just say it's 10 to the 6. And we usually have a log, scale, a log scale here on the x-axis and the strength, the fatigue strength as well. So let's say the number of cycles when we become flat, where we have a zero slope, is 10 to the 6. This tells us that's the number of cycles where we reach what limit? The endurance limit. So this is the endurance limit stress or strength. So we will denote that as SE here on the y-axis. Again, this is strength versus number of cycles. And the endurance limit is when we go flat. And here we know we have infinite life. Basically, we can keep loading this tension compression for infinite life as we go to the right from this point to the right. So that's how we get the endurance limit. But once again, for aluminum and non-ferrous metals, it would look something like this. Let me use red. 
let's say we start here let me use a solid red line we go down down and we do not actually let me denote it like this we do not hit that flat slope so we keep going down like that so we don't go flat if you do not go flat you have no endurance limit because it just keeps going down like that so here what we would actually define and find is like some strength right it's gonna be the fatigue strength we experience cracking or fracture in this case for aluminum the curve shown in red here I'll just denote it as aluminum so for that we have the difference steel and aluminum and we also know that these loads or stresses that are experienced are going to fluctuate right so it's the stress versus time so this is important when we do practice questions this is the maximum stress usually the top portion is going to be in positive so it's in tension and at the very bottom it's going to be negative in compression depending on whether this is maybe zero obviously the bottom is all negative but at times it, the median or the mean stress is going to be like somewhere here so that's kind of different and it depends on the type of condition you have but just note that it changes over time this is like a sinusoidal wave but we know this is the maximum this is the minimum this is the alternating stress and this is the mean and we will use this just to do some calculations so let's go back to the question it's not as bad so we have a steel bar subjected to a steady alternating stress of 110 megapascal and a mean stress of 210 megapascal the following strength properties were extracted from the SN plot data so basically the SN plot data is going to mainly give us the SE value. These are specific to the material used. You usually just find them in tables. The SY is the yield strength. S ultimate is the ultimate strength using the stress strain diagram. These two values. So we're given the following data and based on the modified Goodman criteria, the factor of safety against fatigue failure should be what? what is the factor of safety so that's what we want to find so let's find that we know in the handbook the under variable loading on page 447 so the modified Goodman is given right and what we want to find it is the factor of safety so we would have to make sure to use the equation that has that factor of safety which is denoted by what variable n right so it's the n variable let me write that as n so let's denote our modified goodman criteria equation make sure you use the one with the n variable so in the handbook it shows it like this sigma a divided by se plus sigma m divided by s ultimate greater than equal to 1 over n so the n is what we're looking for all we have to do is plug and chug here but we have to know what we're plugging so this alternating stress is the sigma a right so it's 110 that's sigma a the mean stress is 210 so this is sigma m the se is 287 again this is the endurance limit that we essentially find doing a test right it's this the endurance limit se sometimes it's s prime e and that's the modified endurance limit but that's a different video so we're gonna just denote it by se s the strength at endurance so that's 287 and then s ultimate is gonna be the 561 that's what we need to use s ultimate then you just plug everything so I'll just do that so what we have is going to be the 110 for the alternating so all the units are fine so you do not have to worry divided by the SE which is 287 the Sigma M is the mean which is 210 and we take 
561 on the bottom has to be greater than or equal to 1 over n. So then you just solve for n and we should get 1.32. So we need this factor of safety when we actually use this material for design. So it should be D. So next video we have another quick calculation based question.